Welcome back to Vacation Lander. I'm Kyle. And I'm Brian. And this is The, the Pine, Pine Tree Picture, Picture Show, Show, where we take a look at movies made in Maine or by Mainers. So in our last episode, we looked at Boondock Saints. This is the bonus episode to that because the making of that movie is so interesting, we thought we'd give it its own episode. They actually made a documentary about it called Overnight, and it goes into the making of it and what happened with Troy Duffy who was the writer and director of Boondock Saints, first time writer director. He was a bartender in Los Angeles. He had moved out there from Connecticut, not Boston. He's <laughs> he's not from, not a Boston. He's a poser. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's a, not even a transplant. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, he moved out to LA with his band, The Brood, and he wrote a script for the first time and happened to know a uh, producer's assistant over at New Line Cinema and handed it to him to try and sell. New Line made an offer, and soon after that, there was actually a bidding war between New Line and Miramax. And eventually, Harvey Weinstein over at Miramax won that bidding war. Uh, he offered Troy $450,000 total. That was three hundred dollars just for the script. So $300,000 just for the script. Another one fifty dollars to direct, even though he had never directed before, with a $15 million budget for the movie. Not only that, he actually offered to buy the bar Troy Duffy was working at uh, for Troy as just a gift, as just like a signing bonus. It's a pretty good bonus. Was... Yeah, yeah, not, not too shabby. So they quickly went into casting and figuring out where they were going to shoot it. And there was a lot of people that were interested in making this movie. I guess there was <laughs> no surprise. Uh, Mark Wahlberg was really interested in the script. If you watched our last episode, you'll know that the script is a little bit more offensive and racially terrible <laughs> than the movie was. So, uh, yeah, I'm not saying Mark Wahlberg is a racist person, but, I mean, four hate crimes in two years is a lot to be forgiven for. So let's just... Yeah. <laughs> uh, things we forget about celebrities sometimes yeah, I wonder why he doesn't like being called Marky Mark <laughs> <laughs> aside from the fact that it's a silly name <laughs> Yeah. So, also Ewan McGregor was actually really interested in the movie as well until he met with Troy Duffy in New York he's going to uh, meet with uh, Ewan McGregor I'm going to get drunk with Ewan's <laughs> You can tell it's going to be one of those, come here, come to Papa. <laughs> and Troy got belligerent drunk and went on a long rant about the death penalty. And the next day, Ewan McGregor was out. Uh, Patrick Swayze, who's was potentially going to be signed on to it, but nothing happened there. He, Troy Duffy really wanted to get Kenneth Brenna. and that didn't happen. I love Brenna. I don't know how long I'm willing to wait for Brenna. So, yeah, eventually, Troy Duffy starts to get a little upset with the process. What the f*** is Harvey doing? I mean, what is he really doing? Who is he fighting for? Who is he talking to in the industry right now? If I'm the f***ing priority project over at Miramax, and he's ignoring me, what the f*** is he doing? Yeah, so he gets pissed, then Harvey gets pissed at him, but right. <laughs> guess who's going to win that fight? It's Harvey. Uh, and the script has to wind up entering turnaround. Which is when the production company decides they're not going to make the script anymore. They decide they're going to try and sell it and get something back for it. Yeah, and then uh, Franchise Pictures eventually picks up the project and gives it a $6 million budget instead of $15 million. So kind of a loss there. I kind of want to talk about the band for a bit. Yeah. <laughs> so The Brood, which is... Troy Duffy's band. Uh, or was Troy Duffy's band. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. They changed their name. <laughs> yeah, they eventually changed their names to the Boondock Saints. Uh, Very original. Yeah, they're, they're originally signed on to kind of make the score or be music directors for the project. Uh, the band managers for the band are actually the ones who make the documentary overnight. But throughout the troublesome production of the movie, the band is also suffering, and you see in the documentary how broke they all are and how they're all struggling to get by. Yeah, they're all just average starving artists in Los Angeles, like yeah. the average musician. Throughout this documentary, in general, Troy talks like he's some kind of mob boss talking to his, yeah. 
his cronies all the time? No more ups. I'll keep you informed. Okay. He's always trying to present to them like what the big plan is. Even position. though he never really has one. Yeah, he's always trying to position himself as the guy with the plan, but really he's just boasting about how everybody wants his d basically. I went from a bartender and surpassed everyone and got to the top. Yeah, and every time something goes wrong, every time someone bails on the project, he's he always says, yeah, oh, they're, they're going to be sorry. They're in there having meetings, freaking out because they won't let me in the building. It's, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> what kind of logic is that? Yeah. <laughs> what the f*** are you talking about? He's definitely gotten to the point where he's delusional. Oh, yeah. Throughout. Yeah, without a doubt. The band winds up only getting a couple songs on the soundtrack. Yeah, just two. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, they were they were originally signed on to, to do the whole soundtrack, but, oh, man, thank God that didn't happen. Yeah, because listening to the, some of the music, it's pretty forgettable they still have to learn a little bit about the craft also leave a like if you guys like this video comment uh, subscribe to the channel helps us out a lot uh if you haven't seen our other video go watch that first uh it winds up being shot in toronto some of it's in boston for the establishing shots at the beginning yeah basically most of the exterior stuff but that's yeah that's like it i think but everything else yeah shot in toronto in 32 days which is a really tight schedule. Yeah. No, I mean, not, not unheard of and, and not even unheard of for action, but for such a low budget and for a first time, not just yeah. a first time director, like this guy had never worked on a movie before. To think that he would get it done in that amount of time is, well, I'm sure he was very confident in it, but. <laughs> yeah. Then they, they wrapped, they got everything done, got it edited and started submitting to festivals they got into con and were super excited. Obviously, they bought this huge, beautiful hotel room. His agent got them this great place. And this guy, his agent, oh, what a sleazebag. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they really show that guy is probably one of the reasons why this movie crashed. <laughs> yeah. In the end. Rome has nothing on us. But actually, because of the timing of con. There was really no saving this movie. It doesn't matter who was against him. It doesn't matter uh, if Harvey Weinstein like uh, blacklisted him, which he was convinced of. Nothing really matters because it was Khan was two weeks after the Columbine school shooting. So yeah, a movie glorifying firearms and and lots of lots yeah, of two, two murder. people two people in long black coats with guns. Yeah, uh, yeah, that was just never going to happen. So it, it basically any movie like that just got blacklisted from theaters for the next couple of years yeah but i mean it, it, it did get a small release uh it was released for one week in five theaters i think four of them were in massachusetts and then it was one at hollywood and vine in los angeles and yeah it, we talked about it in our last episode it only made nineteen thousand dollars it's opening weekend thirty thousand dollars total and again, as we discussed in our last video, it became a blockbuster exclusive and blew up. $50 million in DVD sales just the first year. DVD, Blu-ray, everything combined ended up being over $250 million, which none of the cast and crew made any residuals for. Chief, what the f*** is this? What happened was Franchise Pictures had bundled Boondock Saints in with a bunch of losers and... We're just claiming that it wasn't making any money because all these other things were losing money. Boondock Saints was making money. So altogether, it was breaking even. That's basically what they kept telling Troy Duffy until eventually <laughs> Troy sees a guy. He's at a gas station and sees a guy with those Boondock, the Veritas or whatever it says, yeah. on, the tattoos on well, his I know one says truth and one says justice. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. So he sees... Uh, a, a clearly a fan of his movie, such a big fan that he gets tattoos of it and realizes people are seeing this movie and they're lying to me. So he got a lawyer, he sued, uh, and they, they settled out of court. No one knows what they got out of it. I don't know if Bob Marley was included in that settlement. 
That's a good question. I hope he was. I, I, hope so too. I really hope he didn't get just hosed with this whole thing and not really make any money by the end because residuals from the theater would have been absolutely nothing. I mean, yeah. so, Bob, if you're listening, let us know. Yeah. <laughs> did, you, did, did they screw you over? Did they help you out? What, what happened? Let us know. Put it in the comments. <laughs> get in the comments. <laughs> Obviously, it did pretty well with a DVD release. So good that it eventually, 10 years later, ended up getting a sequel, uh, which, as we discussed in our last movie, is not fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Did we talk about how well it did critically in the last video? We didn't, actually. Let's look at the numbers here in terms of the reviews. I gotta do this by the numbers. Because, as we mentioned before, this is a very controversial movie. It will top any list of movies that critics hated and fans loved. Because the Rotten Tomato scores has quite the discrepancy. It's 26% of critics like this movie and 91% of fans or audience. Uh, that is, that's Huge. crazy. Yeah, <laughs> kind of feels like coming from a teacher background, it feels like when you have kids presenting projects in front of the, the class and... It doesn't have all the information it needs, so the teacher scores it at 26. <laughs> but everyone in the class thinks it's, it's like the best thing ever. That Yeah, that's why I think it got the sequels, because it had such good audience reception. But the sequel did not. F. F minus. I think even the, anybody. Yeah, even the fans didn't even like that. Yeah. But it could there possibly be a third, potentially even worse Boondock Saints, the threequel. They are planning on making it, or at least were planning on making it, because apparently Sean Patrick Flannery worked with Troy Duffy. Uh, they had a falling out for a while, but he worked with him on the script for Boondock Saints 3, which was supposed to start shooting in May 2022. Here we are. 2024. Yeah. Nearly nearly two years later and no news, so I imagine they never even started shooting. That makes me think, this is never going to happen. I don't think Boondock Saints 3 is going to happen. Honestly, I'd like to see it. Maybe they can redeem themselves from Boondock Saints 2. But also, they were, they were planning on making a show called Boondock Saints Origins and recasting them. Obviously, a lot of people weren't a fan of the recasting, and a lot of people just weren't a fan of the idea of a TV show. But that didn't stop Troy Duffy from pre-selling the DVD box set of Boondock Saints Origins for $600. Oh my god. I, I would imagine they sold some of them, but... <laughs> That's an expensive box. It was never delivered, obviously, because the show didn't happen. So they didn't just make a show to sell pre-orders. So I don't know if anyone got their money back for that. I don't know if anyone bought it. I don't know who would spend $600, but I think they were just trying to lease as much as they could out of their fan base. Which that's is... more than a PlayStation 5. <laughs> yeah. That's more than any PlayStation that's been brand new ever. Alrighty. That is our show for you today, folks. Thanks so much for joining us. Again, this is Vacation Lander. Uh, check out vacationlander.com if you want to help support the show we have t-shirts there uh, they're all main inspired some movie inspired as well uh, and we'll have a bat moose shirt coming out soon as well uh, so that's vacationlander.com check it out i also have a blog where you can catch up with fun things to do in maine best places to eat etc brian thanks so much for joining me again today yes that thanks for having blast. me yep as always don't forget to like and subscribe get in the comments if you guys uh, love boondock saints if you hate boondock saints if you love us or hate us get in the comments tell us we're doing it just so so yeah <laughs> thanks for joining have a good one bye-bye bye-bye folks